ladies and gents, boys and girls, the Broom Cover Club invites you to get fact. Nightmare was the creation of British television producer Tim Child. An avid gamer at the time, Child was pretty fond of the ZX Spectrum, in particular the games Dragon Talk and Attic Attack. Looking at these two games, it's pretty clear to see how they influenced the Nightmare format. Child theorised that if the humble Specky could produce adventure games of this quality, then there was huge potential for the genre to utilise the magic of television. In 1986, Child put his theory into practice and produced a 15 minute pilot for a series called Dungeon Doom later renamed to the much cooler sounding Nightmare. Even at this early stage, Hugo Myatt was featured as Treyguard, the Dungeon Master. As the host, Myatt is the only actor to appear in every episode of the show. Nightmare pioneered the use of chroma key to create fantasy worlds. At the time, the technique was mainly used in weather forecasts to display maps. Child had a large, entirely blue room created in Studio A of Anglia Studios and commissioned the travelling map company owned by Robert Harris, no, not the Hannibal Lecter bloke, to utilise their advanced computer trickery to help fully realise what would become known simply as the dungeon. This technique was combined with artwork commissioned from video game cover artist David Rowe to create a vibrant, beautiful and deadly environment. According to Tim Child in an interview with The Guardian, We wanted to build an actual castle with scary dungeons, but we didn't have the budget. So we constructed one using computer imagery and painted backdrops to create a world of dragons, jesters and warlocks. Teams were made up of four contestants, three advisors and a dungeoneer who traversed the perils of the dungeon. Early in the development of the series it became clear that the dungeoneer would need to be blinded in some way, else all they'd see would be the blue studio and the illusion would be destroyed. Because of this the Helmet of Justice was introduced. This is probably the most iconic imagery related to Nightmare. As the child contestants could be unpredictable in the way they reacted to certain events, much of Myatt's dialogue was improvised. This includes the line that quickly became a catchphrase for Treyguard. The introduction of Pickle in Series 4, played by Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy alumni David Lerner, allowed for even more ad-libbed moments between the two characters, which led to this infamous sign-off. Phase shift, Master! And right in the middle of a very shifty encounter. Timely, Pickle, timely. At least it's had the same effect on Sylvester Hands as it has on Richard and Co. <laughs> and the watchers at home will be able to plan their tactics, even if the game team is temporarily suspended. And will the watchers go home now, Master? Well, of course they will, Pickle. If you ask them nicely, well, go on, don't be shy. Really? <laughs> All right, then. I say you lot. <laughs> Bog off. Series 4 featured a number of other changes, perhaps the most notable of which being the introduction of the Ice Shield, which allowed the use of pre-recorded segments known as Passive Paths. This was due to the decision to allow the Dungeoneer to venture beyond the dungeon walls, and the paths were used to make the world feel more expansive. Like several viewers, Tim Sharp was not a big fan of the new edition, but saw it as a necessity to help the programme grow. In an article for Nightmare.com entitled A History of Nightmare, Child stated that, so you could argue, and many have, that such location acquired journeys, we call them passive paths, offer less in terms of interactive choice than the prospect of exploring one of David Rhodes' painted patios. And of course, you would be right. In an era where many children's game shows focused on physical games, Nightmare was well received for presenting an environment where teams were encouraged to use their brains to solve puzzles and answer riddles. It was also incredibly difficult, with only eight teams claiming victory throughout its seven year run. Failure meant paying the ultimate price. Death. Six, five. Now come on, keep going, keep sidestepping to your right, just keep going. What's next? What's next? Too slow, too slow, Harry, this is much too slow. Stop. Stop. One forward. Um, One forward. One forward. Ooh. Nah. 
fantastic. At least in the dungeon dimension. Losing teams were always shown alive and well in the real world after being defeated by whatever trap or evil being they had fallen foul to. That didn't stop well-known crusader for decency Mary Whitehouse from denouncing the show for killing kids, till it transpired she hadn't actually seen a single episode. Once she had watched the show, she respectfully apologised. Series 5 saw the introduction of an ongoing narrative for each series, including the first appearance of a new big bad known as Lord Fear, played brilliantly by Mark Knight. <gasps> Mother was lost. What can you see? Shh, people. It's mad. Shh, mad. The rest of you just like these. Yes. Those are fright nights. But this, unless I'm much mistaken, is the opposition. Away, you mindless bits of metal. What companions for an intellect that can freeze rivers and move mountains? Away, I'm trying to concentrate. Now, where is that pesky goblin master? And even more important, where is the dungeoneer he hunts for? Damnation! But although I see nothing, I feel something. Dragon's breath, but the impertinence of it! Something is spying on me! Very well, little spy. Take a good look. Because, you know, looks really can. Fear replaced the previous villain, Mogdred, played by the late great John Woodnut. Tim Child stated that he felt he'd gone about as far as he could go with the character, and that a change was required in order to keep the show fresh. At turns comical and genuinely frightening, Lord Fear became an incredibly popular addition to the series. That's all the facts we have time for in this episode, but there are many more nightmare facts we were unable to include. For instance, did you know that the shows revived for a one-off YouTube special in 2013, or that there have been many international versions of the show? Leave us a comment if you'd like to see a part 2 of this video, or let us know which nostalgic kids TV shows you'd like to see an episode on. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give the bell a quick ding-a-ling so you don't miss any future videos, or if you like, you can help us out by supporting us on Patreon, link in the description. Or if you don't want to, that's fine too. We're just glad that someone's watching. Thanks for coming, now fact off.